Manfred, welcome back to Australia for what appears to be your third trip. Third trip over quite a long time, actually. The first was in 1964? In the end of 64, yes. Yeah. Now, how long had you been going in show business at that stage? Oh, well, since the Franco-Prussian War. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed that long, didn't it? Um, no, it started seeming long after that. Um, no, it's hard to say what show business is. You know, when I played at a coffee bar in Johannesburg, some bored businessmen. Was that show business? I don't know. Mm. I'd been in England since 1961, probably for two years, I suppose. Well, now, you began with, uh, let's list them, Mike Vickers, Mike Hug, Paul Jones, and Tom McGuinness. Yeah. And as I have it written down here, your first trick was, Why Should We Not? One of your own compositions. That's right. Was this a, a high mark in your career? What, the first record? Yes. No, I would say it was very unimportant. Why do you say that? Because nothing happened to the record. <laughs> That's a fair enough answer. <laughs> it's not a successful record. Now, you've had a number of groups uh, in the intervening years, since 1964. Mm. Would you like to introduce the lads surrounding you at the moment? Uh, Gee, you mean I'm sort of like a little... In I like a master of ceremonies here. If you wish. Yes. Uh, well, well, that's Colin Pattenden from the wilds of West London. Colin. Hello, Colin. This is Chris Slade, from also from the wilds of West London. Hey. <laughs> and uh, West Wales. just of West Wales. And this is Mick, who, um, contrary to popular belief, comes from England. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mick, perhaps I'll get direct a question to you. You've uh, become quite well known to Australian audiences through your own groups here in Australia. The last of which was Bulldog. Bulldog, yeah. What made you decide to leave Australia? Because I think the thing is that no matter how big you are in Australia, um, it means little elsewhere. And I just wanted to get back to England. Um, the scene is, is more swinging there than any other place in the world, you feel? Yeah, well, there's a lot more open up to you there. And there's the continent, and there's a chance of sort of making it in America as well. And how did you come to be mixed up with Manfred? I met him briefly when I was in England with Procession. I did a, a jingle, um, commercial, just met very briefly. And then I came back to, to Australia, got Bulldog together, and uh, had a letter from Manfred saying he's starting a new band. I'd like to go back. And you're obviously happy in your present situation. Yeah, yeah. You're playing the sort of music you want to play? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Manfred, uh, just which directions do you see your music taking these days compared to 1964? Well, in 1964, it, it wasn't any direction. It was simply trying to make hit records. And since nobody was really listening to the music once you got on the stage, it seemed immaterial what you did. You know. Probably it was exciting, you jumped around and sort of sucked your cheeks in. It was all right. I, you know, it really, I think the records were good as commercial records, certainly performing was, you know, at least for myself and the group I was in, it just wasn't an important aspect at all. Now I think that um, the way we're going, I, I, it's very difficult to say, I think a lot of the things we're playing are just very weird, there's a lot of quite freaky things happening, that we're trying to let everything that happens come in a very natural way without trying to force it and make it seem weird or we're not trying to impress people as such, which a lot of bands, I think, um, at least in England, try and do. You know, I'm clever, I can do this. L look how intricate this is and modern and progressive and strange. We're, we're trying to avoid that and still doing a lot of the perhaps slightly strange things that we hear, I suppose. Are you aware of any influence on your thinking in, in musical writing or is it all your own? Well, I think writing? there are influences on, my, on bits I like, yeah. Anybody in particular? Well, they're all a sort of mixed thing, but I think like Ornette Coleman is to some extent an influence on the kind of themes that I write, instrumental themes. Um, but it's hard to say, because the whole thing just gets mixed up, you know, listen to so many things. Just how far do your jazz roots go if you're a Coleman fan? Jazz well, I started listening to jazz in South Africa. I started listening to Duke Ellington and Count Basie and Miles Davis. And um, I was never into sort of St. Louis blues and that sort of thing. We really started with what was then called modern jazz. It goes back that far. But I don't really listen to much jazz now. So I really listen to rock music now. Mm. But the influences, I suppose, are there somewhere in the background. What about you, lads? Have you engaged yourself in the writing of music? Could we speak together? <laughs> <laughs> Colin, first of all. 
Well, not really, no. I just, we just sort of play, whatever we play it seems to aid the group, you know. Each of us do our own thing. And it seems to make something from that. And how many groups have you performed with in the past? Um, two others previously. These were? <coughs> a group called Technique in England. The main thing, we did a lot of radio in England. Yeah. And the other thing was just a small thing that was previously, it was nothing really. They were repairing radios. <laughs> 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 from within or without? <laughs> Chris, yeah, uh, which facet of uh, show business would you prefer, television or live performance? Oh, live uh, on stage, definitely. You can just uh, you can play to the crowd, you know, get a get the music across in the way it's supposed to be put across, you know, to please people, I suppose. That's the main thing. And what are your musical backgrounds? Aha! Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> I was with Tom Jones for uh, seven or eight years previous to this. That's his Esquire. Sorry? Part of his Esquire group? Uh, yeah, the Squires. Yeah. The Squires, yeah. I'm sorry. But uh, after that as well, with um, Jim Sullivan on guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a couple of tours of America, six month tours. After about three years, I got fed up and uh, <laughs> left. And uh, I was doing sessions in London, freelance sessions. And I did one for Manfred's Chapter 3. Yeah. And. Uh, about a month afterwards, I think Manny phoned me up and asked me to join his new band. Have you plans for an album, which we can expect in a few months' time? Well, I'm beginning to realise from Mick, Mick's on my left here, by the way, <laughs> that one can never be sure when they're going to be released in Australia, uh, because they seem to come out here rather later than they do in England. Um, for example, our last LP came out in England in January, it's only just come out here now. Yes. Some months later, as you will get. Um, I don't know when the other LP is coming out. We're really mainly concerned with the American release and when it's going out in the States. We just, um, I don't want it to sound wrong, sound unpleasant, but we're really on, we don't know and we really just don't concern ourselves very much whether, when the records are coming out anywhere but the States. Even in England, we aren't that concerned. All right, then, may I wish you at this stage safe tripping. Thank you very much for your courtesy. You. Colin, Chris, Manfred, and Nick, come back and see us soon. Thank you.